why do some firms grow and get so big that everyone's heard of them, while others remain small and known only to a handful of people? They tend to do things big here in the States, none more so than Walmart. They only opened their first store in 1962, and now they're the top company in the Fortune 500 list by turnover. It's an amazing growth in a relatively short space of time. They've done it by growing, getting economies of scale, and then using those economies of scale to get good prices from input suppliers, which they pass on to consumers in the form of low prices. Some people don't like Walmart very much. There's an argument that says they come in and drive out local producers and come to dominate the market. And so the result of Walmart's arrival is a loss of other local industry. But others have pointed out that in the meantime, consumers get low prices. Some have suggested that once local suppliers have been driven out of business, Walmart raises its prices again. Though there's not really very much evidence for that. Walmart moves into area, prices do go down, and I think there's very little evidence that prices eventually rise by at all, certainly not more than they originally were. And why? For a good economic, not because Walmart's an altruist or anything like that. If they thought they could do it, they probably would do it. It's very easy for people to come back in. Retailing is not a sector that's very difficult to enter. And you have a lot of competition for Walmarts now. So I think Walmart has been a very effective company in really increasing the degree of competition. The process of growth by economies of scale can be seen in other industries also. Electricity generation, the oil industry, and the financial sector. But bakers, chemists, and many agricultural firms remain very small because these are industries with relatively few economies of scale. But there's an interesting alternative explanation to the growth process. Could it be a stochastic process, one determined by luck? don't get the impression that Walmart are always successful in everything they do. They might be huge, but sometimes they get things wrong. They went into Germany. It only lasted a few years. It failed. They sold their stores and got out again. So they've been very successful in some countries, including the UK, but much less in others. So if companies can grow even when they make mistakes, is it that they're sometimes just lucky. We'll illustrate the idea from an American economist named Scherer. He looked at a period in the US economy when companies were growing on average by 6%, but they weren't all growing at that rate, and the standard deviation of growth over that period was 16%. So taking those numbers, he worked out what would happen over time and he did it in the following way. He started off with 50 firms, each with 2% of the market. So the four firm concentration ratio, as it's called, the share in the hands of the biggest four, was 8%. Now, he assumes that next year, these 50 firms grow by an average of 6%, some growing faster, some growing more slowly, with a standard deviation of 16%. But which is growing faster will be a matter of pure chance. He's got a random generator so that the computer is randomly choosing which companies grow and which companies do relatively badly. Now imagine the same thing happens again in year two. Some firms who were lucky last time may be lucky again. Some firms lucky last time are not so lucky this time. What would happen to the industrial structure over time? There's nothing here 
because its wisdom or cleverness is leading it to grow. It's simply pure chance. In year one, we start off with a CR4, a concentration ratio of eight. Within 20 years, the top firms have now got 19.5% of the market, just because some keep getting lucky. Within 40 years, the top four have gone to 29.3%. Within 140 years, they've grown to 41.3% of the market. A random chance stochastic process. Sherrill repeated the process many times. Every time he did it, he got the same pattern, but the rate of increase in concentration varied from time to time. So here we now show an average of all the runs that he tried. If we average out all those runs that he did, by the time he'd got to 140 years, on average, the top four firms finished up with 57.4% of the market. Big firms with a concentration of power can arise because of a stochastic process. So it's a company which has been enormously successful in terms of turnover, not that successful in terms of profitability. Other large companies are smaller than they are by turnover and yet make more profits. For example, ExxonMobil has a smaller turnover and yet makes more profits. If you look at the top 10 companies by turnover, you notice wide variations between profitability and turnover. In some cases, the variations are quite extreme. Chevron is less than half the size of Walmart by turnover, yet makes more profit. The financial sector was doing very badly at this time. Two companies in this list, Fannie Mae, and Bank of America actually making losses. Lower down the list of the top 500 come other loss-making companies, including airlines. So just how closely correlated are turnover and profit for these large US companies? In a previous film, we looked at a correlation coefficient where the only information we had about the variables was the ranking. But here we've got actual values, so we can use a different formula, the Pearson Product Moment Correlation Coefficient. We'll get a value of between minus 1 for perfect negative correlation and plus 1 for perfect positive correlation. Now let's see what we get for our correlation between turnover and profitability of the large American companies. The formula we need is given as R equals N times sigma XY minus sigma X times sigma Y all over the square root of N times sigma X squared minus sigma X squared times N times sigma Y squared minus sigma y squared, where n is the number of pairs of scores that we have. Sigma xy is the sum of the products of the paired scores. Sigma x is the sum of the x scores. Sigma y, the sum of the y scores. Sigma x squared, the sum of the squared x scores. Sigma y squared, the sum of the squared y scores. Now. Although it's very straightforward to calculate, it's extremely tedious. So this time, we've computed the results with an Excel spreadsheet. And we did it four times, looking at the top 10, then the top 50, then the top 100, and then the top 500 companies. And you can see that the results are all fairly similar. A definite, but not particularly strong, positive correlation. In other words, those with higher turnover tend to make higher profits, but the link is far from perfect. The reasons for the limited link between turnover and profitability are beyond our scope here, 
But you can see how our statistics enables us to look at the evidence for such things and help students to reflect on why these things may be so.